Anyway, a little bit of background about us. Around 13 years ago, we bought a cottage in Southern Ireland. Um, we've enjoyed that. However, since COVID has come along, the ability to travel abroad or book a holiday with confidence, um, that's just been completely knocked. So, you know, you've also got to consider the costs of the PCR tests, uh, the rules are changing on a week by week. You've got to consider the rules of your own country, but also the destination country. So we wanted a different solution and we thought, well, we need to start thinking about holidaying in the UK. We wanted uh, a solution where we could go away every weekend if we wanted to, when the weather's nice, but also to have a decent sort of two week spell in Devon or Cornwall. Anyway. So we decided to go for the Ariba, well, the modern version. So now you know, we've bought the Ariba camper. Uh, we haven't been out in, in the Ariba for a month now. So we'll be going out tomorrow for a couple of nights out. A um, couple of things I've got to do before we go. We had an icy evenings a couple of weeks ago when I drained the water tanks. So I've just got to fill up the tanks again, uh, close all the drain points, and then I'll show you around the Ariba and we'll go inside and take a look. Come on, let's go. So here she is, uh, Beatrice at uh, the Ariba. I'll just give you a little bit of a walk around. Small German camper van. Quite, uh, uh, quite compact and good quality. Uh, they're built to last. They tend to last for decades, to be honest. Okay, we'll start with the hitch. So this is where, obviously, the the ball joint will go under here. What we tend to do is just uh, back up the vehicle towards the hitch, check the height, wind the jockey wheel, bring it up to a level where we can get the vehicle under, and um, then lower the jockey wheel. You'll know when it's hitch. You'll hear a clunk. One of the things I always uh, was worried about when I first started towing was how it hitched properly. Well, you can tell that because what you can do while the jockey wheel is still down, you can wind the lever back up again and check that it lifts the vehicle and then you know you're connected properly. This is an anti-snake device. Um, the ball on the vehicle must be kept dry, clean, but slightly scuffed. Whatever you do, don't be greasing it. Uh, this is the handbrake. Just pulls right up. The electrics. 13 pin. The mistake that we made was that we originally had a 7 pin plug on the back of the vehicle and we thought we could just buy a converter on the cheap and just convert it to a 13 pin. Well you can't because what that will do is give you no power to your ledger battery. So you need to have a, a proper 13 pin plug socket wired to the car with the, with the correct wiring and we had to have a new harness fitted. And this little red thing here is a breakaway cable and the idea is that you attach that to the vehicle and if the trailer should come away for any reason it will snatch up the handbrake and apply the brakes to the wheels for a controlled stop. Now for the gas. Um, usually you only get one gas bottle, we managed to get a second one off country but um, and all the gas bottles only look small but they do tend to last quite a long time so after six months we've only used half a bottle. We tend to use a site electric for a lot of the things. Um, there's a national uh, or global uh, gas bottle shortage and they're hard to get hold of. I think you can get refills a lot easier now than you could um, uh, in, the, in the summer. You've got toilet chemicals, blue and pink. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Moving around to the side now, utilities area. So you've got the, the, the uh, electric connection for the pump. Your water goes in here, it's got a lock on it for obvious reasons. Okay, here you've got the Thetford toilet, this just pulls out. Put your blue chemical in here. The water flush just goes in here with a pink chemical. And just, be, just make sure that when you take the Thetford for empty and you tell everybody else not to use the toilet. <laughs> so here you've got the wheels, alloy wheels, 
one of the things that I was a little bit disappointed about though was that a Reba don't give you a wheelbase to undo the nuts and they're not the same size as those on a car or for the motor mover or for winding the legs so we had to we had to buy our own off Amazon um, we've got the the motor mover here but we can see it it's a rake motor mover it's quite uh, got a high clearance of around about 10 inches they can be manual or auto engaged we bought the manual it only takes six or seven winds of the handle and it engages both sides at once and then here you've got the electric so you always tend to get a 25 meter cable and it plugs in at the side you have a TV point we haven't had this wired up seems to be European fittings to be honest but uh, we have the television inside small toolbox where you put your chocks and your cables and your attachments these two little blue things here these are what you want to do for the for draining the water and there are four different points throughout the caravan and when you drain out there's a little pipe underneath it the water drips out there you've got your vents for your fridge here you've got the small awning light you can switch that on and off from inside the van and at the top here if you get a two-lay canopy fitted it does tend to come out around 10 feet it's really really nice uh, in summer you can probably see here there's a, a small um, uh, band of LED lights you operate this with a dimmer switch it looks really nice in summer um, and on the outside here you've got a little rail which the internal table comes out we use it all the time and we attach it onto that uh, you'll notice uh, on with this van it's a European van so the door is on the, the wrong side for the UK. It can cause problems because some sites like to have everybody parking up or pitching up with the door facing the same side and that's why you need a motor mover to be honest um, because you, you're pushing it all the time and it's really easy to manoeuvre with a motor mover. You can actually spin this uh, camp around like on a pinhead uh, using the remote control. It's, it's really good. Um, so now we'll, we'll go on. Well, I've got a couple of jobs to do. I need to get the tanks filled up. I'll get that done and then I'll show you around the details inside. Okay, so let's go in and take a look. Here we go. So the first thing that we do when we get in, um, we, need to, we need to lift up the roof. Let's do both sides. We've got plenty of headroom. So just having a quick look around now. So that's the front seating area. Okay, just move it around. Uh, kitchen area, I'll go into a bit more detail in a minute. Uh, rear dinette. Uh, some of these uh, campers have a fixed bed and it means you've got a lot more storage underneath. Um, those in favour of a fixed bed would say that you don't need to keep setting up your bed every two minutes, but well, um, you know, we can leave that fixed up if we want. Um, it just gives it that bit extra space and, and a second down, a second seating area when there's three of us and now William can have his own privacy at the front. One of the temptations with a fixed bed, you can overload the back end. So down here there's a switch for the hot water. You tend to get um, one sink full and it takes around 15 minutes to heat up. Here's the fire, it works off electric and gas. There's a small igniter battery just underneath there at the bottom. It's, it works quite well off gas, really well, but it also works off site electric. I'll just show you the controls now. For the site electric, you've got a top dial, um, a 500, 1000, 2000. It's like the old three bar fire. We just tend to use 500, um, and the temperature turns in the middle. That's simple enough. You've got the whole power isolator for the caravan, so we have that switched on. Now you'll notice up is on because it's a European van. And then you've got your light switches. Up here you've got like a reading light. If you hold the button down you get a little gentle blue light. Hold the button again and it goes off. Otherwise it's a little bit too bright. And that's so you don't wake your partner up in the night. 
if you need to go to the toilet. I'm just moving it around now, a little bit more. Um, there's a, a plug socket at the top here, we tend to use this for our mobile phones etc. And just put things up here. The plug sockets don't work if you're not connected to the site electric. Got wardrobe space here. Okay, this is for the television area outside. You can put the switch on and off. Decent enough wardrobe space. Um, a few uh, compartments there, but small things. We tend to travel light anyway, we don't take that much to be honest. Additional storage space at the bottom here. It's where we put things like bottles or, or olive oil or well, a few cans or whatever. Just moving over to the bathroom now. There's one one small thing that Ariba could do with improving. One of the things that uh, tends to happen is you do tend to get a lot of movement, and this door can keep coming open on it on its own. So some people have put catches on the top. Ours is a bit more a bit more basic. We just put a piece of string and hook it onto this, one of these coat hangers here, and it, it stops the door swinging open and being ripped off its hinges. So we'll go into the bathroom now. Okay, we've got these touch lights all over. Okay, it's fairly straightforward. Um, toilet, um, sink, it's got a shower basin, but we don't use the shower, we tend to use the site facilities. Got a shower curtain, we've never used it, and the tap comes off as a shower. Some people would say that if you're in the middle of nowhere and you're off grid, just put the shower outside of the window and wash yourself outside, provided nobody about. Moving around here now to the seat now. But this is actually the most this is the most favourite part of the caravan, it's really cozy here. We've got sockets here, two um, three pin plugs and the USB, two USB ports there. This uh, table comes off, goes onto the bottom, the bottom um, uh, rail down there, and then the seats come across for a bed. You'd be surprised just how wide these are. So this is the double bed area at the back. You, you can, you've got about six foot five worth of um, space transverse. Decent enough fridge here. What we tend to do when we set off, we put some ice packs in here because we're running with the 13 pin plug on the uh, to and it's running through the leisure battery. So we'll put the ice packs in to start things off, put all our food in there. We tend to um, uh, go shopping every other day anyway when we're away. Decent enough storage here. Sink. Uh, this is common. This turns over and goes into a cutting board. One thing I would say though is that well, these taps have like a micro switch in them, and if you're if you've drained your water tanks and you leave them in the up position like you're supposed to over winter, if you come back to the caravan and put your electric on first, that means that your pumps are going to start running if the taps are left in the up position, and you can burn a pump out a water pump in inside a minute. So put your taps down before you. Put the lights on if your tanks are empty. It's a decent enough little camper and um, it's fairly robust. Um, they tend to last for decades, these things. Okay, so when we do a bit of washing up, you've got this little bit of a, a flap here that lifts up, a little bit of extra space. We tend to put the dirty pots on there, wash in the sink, and we have this tea towel. Over the over the hob, and we just put the plates on there, and then we'll just dry them off. Um, the cooking facilities here, just got like a, a two burner hob. Remember, this is a camper. We're not going to come away wanting a grill and oven. and we're not going to cook the Christmas turkey in here. We tend to eat more the simple type foods such as like the pastas and the rices. Um, you know, fairly straightforward, easy to do, just like you would if you if you're camping. To be honest. Okay, so you're probably wondering now um, how much one of these things is going to cost. Okay, so they do tend to hold the value quite a lot. Um, you could, when you go to a dealer and they start to tell you about prices, they always start to quote this base price. Just forget base price. Nobody sells base price, and there's 
and the additions you get. This is a GT uh, pack on there, uh, which is very, very common. Um, so, for example, with a, a new van, um, you could end up paying 25,000 and you could end up um, spending an extra thousand, whatever, 300 on a motor mover, then you've got the canopy and so on, and then the, the, the sides for that. Um, if, you, if I'm honest with you, it could you could well be paying up to about 29,000. It's an awful lot of money for a small caravan, and I would completely understand if, if you said it's just not worth the money. However, so being an accountant, I think of not just the initial payout, I think about uh, this thing called depreciation. So, for example, if you did lay out 29000 on one of these, you could well then be in a position in 10 years' time. So we bought ours in 2021. In 2031, in today's money, it will still be worth 19000 which means that we've had a whole decade of going away, having holidays, lots of weekends away, um, building memories for ten grand. And when you consider that you could take your family... Um, two adults, two children, to an all-inclusive hotel in Spain for two weeks, you can quite easily burn up five grand in one trip. So ten grand for a whole decade worth of memories, to me, it's it's an investment, it's not it's not a, a payout. You can buy an Ariba at ten years old and it'll still be a fantastic caravan in great condition. People do look after them and they're built really well. So you know if you if you bought one ten years old at eighteen or nineteen thousand you could then keep that for another 10 years and you'll still get eleven or 12,000 for it then. So, you know, you don't have to buy brand new with these things. What I would say, if you're buying one that's probably 15 years old or more, I would just consider and make sure you check the chassis because the older versions, unlike the newer versions, didn't have a galvanised chassis and some of them did suffer from corrosion and you might need to get a bit of work done. But having said that, you know, you will get a lot of enjoyment out of a camper. People who have Arebas tend not to want to be seen as caravanners. They tend to be seen as campers or want to be seen as campers. So, you know, that's that's up to you. We've come from a camping background and I never wanted to, I always was always put off with towing a big white caravan. We found that the Ariba camper, it's easy to tow. You don't actually need the extra mirrors on the side of your vehicle and it can be towed with the average family car. Anything with a 1600 engine or above, you're good to tow. That's it. So what I'll do now, I'll pack up, i go back home. We're off tomorrow for a couple of nights and I'll introduce you to my wife Catherine and my son William. Bye for now. This video has been sponsored by kitsandboots.com, recycling for sport.